So the next thing we're going to explore tonight, we're going to examine this image tab up here quite a bit tonight. So I'm going to click on image, and then we're going to go to auto punch. What this is, this would be like if you scanned in an image on your Venture or Altair or Solaris of a drawing or a photograph, that type of thing. That's what we're looking at right now. And what Auto Punch does, it also deals with SVG files. So if we click on Auto Punch, notice it automatically pulls up this folder that's built into Palette called Vector Image. So these are built into Palette for something to learn with. You can actually do a photograph or anything of what you want to pull into this. So, for instance, let's do this one here and open. Now, all this is is just an image. Like if you use a graphics program, I use Adobe Illustrator for to draw my artwork with. And Adobe Illustrator, if I had drawn this out in Adobe in Illustrator, it would actually look like this, if that is how I had colored it and I didn't put any more detail into it. So what you're doing, you're pulling in basically a vector image to create an embroidery design with. So I'm not gonna change any of the default settings here just so we can see how this works. So you can actually, these are masks and this is a square. So it has the whole frame. But there, you might have something in there that's smaller or a different shape. You can actually change the masks. If I, if I selected that one, it would cut out everything inside of that diamond or a circle. Oh, that one kind of looks nice. And But I'm just going to leave it on the full mask this time and select Next. And now this represents my nine and a half by nine and a half inch frame. If I wanted to fit that to fill the frame, I can click on this one button down here, fit to page. I can also drag the handle, the little black boxes, the handlebars, and change the size of it as well. Right now it's 3.93 by 3.93 is what this represents. And I'm just going to fit it to the page. And now it's 8.98 by 8.97, basically nine inches by nine inches. Now I'm going to select next. And it's already identified the different colors in it. So once we get to this section, what we're going to do is actually make sure I'm saying this right. If I didn't want one of these, one of these to print out, maybe I don't want all of this stem work. Maybe I'm just wanting the two flowers. If you click on the color, in this screen that you do not want to incorporate into your design. If you just click on it and it grays it out and we click on finish, check it out. It's working on it, it's doing the work. It just eliminated all of that stem work and leaves and left me with my two flower designs. Now I'm gonna go back because there's something else I'm gonna show you that's really kind of cool with this. We're going to go back. I'm going to clear the page. Select. I don't want to save anything. Go back into Auto Punch. I'm going to select that same design again, the flower. Open. And I'm going to leave this right where it was and hit Next. Fit to page. And I'm doing fit to page so that we can see it easier online. Maybe in the real world, I'd actually want a smaller design. So now that I have this selected, I'm going to hit next. And now I'm going, I'm going to eliminate the elements. Maybe I just want one flower to play with, and that's what I want. So I'm going to click on the stem color. And then I'm going to do this flower and that flower, just so I have this one flower shape that it's going to digitize. Right now, this is just a drawing. And what I've done, I've eliminated what I do not want to stitch out. The only thing that will be a stitch out will be this one flower petal and the circle inside of the center. Kind of reminds me of a Black Eyed Susan a little bit. Now I'm going to click Finish. 
And now I'm just left with this one design element. And you might be wondering, well, why would you do that? Well, check this out. Now that I have this, I can go back to my home tab and I can select a range copy. Remember that circle copy thing that I like so much? Well, check it out. Let's make us a wreath of these flowers. And once it's selected, I can re once I create this, I can resize it even more so it'll fit my hoop. And now, notice that's all selected, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna group this together. Group. And once it's done, then I am going to size it. I'm gonna click on the size tab and I'm going to select the bottom box. Let's see here. Because I want to do it by size, I want it nine inches basically by nine inches. There we go. Now I'm going to preview it. Perfect. And I'm going to select on OK. And now I'm going to click on the arrange button. And I'm going to move that entire design to the center of the hoop so it's centered on my page. Remember, this would be stitched out in the nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. And there you have it. There we have taken <clears throat> a large SVG image. We selected just one element to stitch out. If I had left it alone, and I'm going to do that next so you would see what that entire image would look like stitched out. And when you're looking at this, don't pay any attention if like there's some little white flex in it like here. That's just a, a visual aberration. It will stitch out solid, okay? That's just this, some limitations in computer screens that don't allow that, that's normal. I even talked to Mike Johns about that and he told me that that is nothing to worry, worry about. It will not stitch out with little white holes in it, okay? So there's that. Next, Let's clear that again. I don't want to save anything. So I'm going to go back to the image tab, back to auto punch. I'm going to go back down to that flower design and click open. And I'm going to hit next. I'm going to fit it to the page. And then I'm going to click on next again. And now, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the finish, the finish tab and it just send it back to my design center and there's the entire thing now. Everything you see is what will be the step. If we go to the shapes tab, I've over it so there's the four-way arrows. If I now right-click on it, This could these things fill stitch for say the flowers and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe I'd want a satin stitch. I'm just going to click on it. I can always undo it. Let's see what it does. And that cuts it adds a satin stitch to it. The different colorations, those are not different colors. That just represents how the shading would work because it's going to have raised areas of stitching. Let's go back to use the full stitch. And that's where we started. If I wanted to change these colors, all I would have to do like in the in off of the design page that deselects everything. Maybe I would want to change the color of the stems and the leaves. So I'm going to come over here to where this is represented on the left hand side of the screen, under the sewing order, and I'm going to double click on five, which would be all of these stems and leaves. And then you can see that's the only box highlighted there. So that's the only part of this, the whole image that I'm working with now. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I can go in here and click on this little spool right beside it and change the color of those fill stitches. Let's pick something green. Let's pick that green right there. Now it's a little dark for my taste. Let's go a shade lighter. Let's see what that looks like. Better. And then maybe I, I want the leaves to have a different texture to it, right? So maybe I want to do a program fill stitch. And what that does, notice it's actually added different texture lines to it. I like that. The sewing attributes. Right now, I'm still just working with the leaves over here, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so here, I could adjust density if I wanted to. I could also adjust it here, dense, medium, light. This is the under sewing, which is some it's stitches that are sewn underneath embroidery to help stabilize things. I would personally, I would not change that. <clears throat> but here, why it says programmable fill, okay? You can actually pick by clicking on that little pattern icon right there. This will get add texture to your fill stitches. All these different patterns. So maybe you want one that has this, that was more like a herringbone and you can actually kind of see a herringbone on the screen. Let's select pattern 02. It's looked okay. Let's just see what that would change on the green only. And it totally changed what that would look like. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this even better. And now you can really see what the texture of my stems would look like. So I'm gonna go back over here to the shapes menu and come back over here for my programmable fill. And I'm gonna click on that file folder again. We're gonna see what it, something else might look like. What about this one here, pattern of PAT04? We're gonna select that and see how that changes, changes the, ooh, that's pretty, I like that. And notice the difference in the texture. You can do this with, this is how you add texture to your embroidery instead of just flat embroidery, okay? So, if you're happy, I'm going to leave that one alone because I actually kind of dig that. I really do like that. So I'm going to go back over here to my home screen now. Am I? No, I'm not. I'm going to click on this icon here. It says select. That gets rid of my magnifying glass. Watch. One click. Now I no longer have the magnifying up, but it stayed zoomed in, which is what I wanted. So now I'm going to select one of these other flower petals and we're going to add texture to that. Oops, come on now. There you go. So we're going to play with this flower right here next. We're going to change the color on it and we're going to add texture different from our, our, our stemming. So this one would be number one right up here. And you can see, you know you selected the one you're wanting to work on when the little black boxes appear around that design. And I'm gonna go back to programmable fill stitch again. And then I'm gonna select over here a little file folder. I'm leaving everything else at default. And then we're gonna add a different type of texture to this. Notice there's that hairy bone. Isn't that pretty? Now that I've zoomed in, you can actually see the texture in it. That's net 01, net one. Let's do something totally different. Let's scroll down a little bit. So that looks interesting. Let's do pattern 08 to see what that looks like. Right here is what we're changing. Wow, that really made a cool difference. Now keep in mind, this is just going to be one thread color, okay? And that's just showing you how the shading would look because this will have a raised texture to it, very rich and powerful. 
but we're going to change that thread color. I want fuchsia flowers. My phlox is blooming outside in the gardens, and it's a fuchsia colored phlox. It's really pretty. So I'm changing that particular color to my phlox color. Maybe I want that a little bit lighter. Let's go to this one. Oh, that's more like what I, my color is out in my garden. And then I'm going to change this center from this gold color. So that means now I want to, I'm going to deselect my box just by clicking in the, in the back gray background area on my design page. And now I'm going to select design uh, and sewing order, the number two square, which would be this little center right here. There's the black boxes around it. And I'm going to change the color of that. I think I am going to make it, let's see what this tangerine color would look like. I can't tell that it did anything. Let's try it again. <laughs> it's not previewing it like it should. Isn't that interesting? So let me just fit this whole thing to page again. And then we are going to double click on that again, go to shapes, click on our thread chart. Let's select black this time, see if it changes. Not sure what's going on with that. You know, it never fails, right? <laughs> Let's see here. But you get the idea. This is how you would change your thread colors. I don't know why it's not changing on my screen. Let's select yellow maybe this time, but let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to go down and to my other flower color, my other flower motif right here. And I'm going to change that thread color. I'm actually going to change it. At first, though, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do programmable fill stitch. That changed like it's supposed to. I'm going to change that thread color to maybe a lighter lilac y color. That changed. Yay. But I'm going to also change that fill pattern. So that was number eight. Let's do one a little bit different this time. Let's see what these hearts would look like. I'm just curious. Oh, that's a cool texture. I'm going to zoom in on that. Well, let me go back to my home, click my zoom icon. Let's have a better look at that one. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Pretty cool. OK. Select. Deselect, and I'm going to try to change this color right here. Oh, let's see what happened. That might have been the under, the underlayment or whatever. So let me just click on that one again. And go to home, fit to screen. Because I'm bound to determine to change the color of the center of that stitch. Let's go to, let's go to this one again, see if it does it. There we go. There we go. There it changed. Okay. But I do want to add some texture to that one as well. And I'm doing this kind of repetitive just so you can really get a feel for it because I urge you to play with this. It is so much fun to do. So I'm going to go over here now to my little file folder. Let's see here. Programmable fill stitch. There's the file folder there. And I want something to kind of like make it textured like dots. That's what I would like for it to do. Go back up. We're going to try this one. I think that might 
give it the texture that I want. Oh yeah, that's the one. And now we'll zoom back in again. And yeah, you can get a really good look. Kind of like pet, to me, that's kind of like what the center of some flower seeds look like. They have all these little dots on the inside. So it's a nice contrast. I think it looks pretty cool. It is what it is. I like that. So we'll go back here, fit to screen. And the thing is, when you're clicking on things and you get the hourglass, wait for it to finish doing its thing before you click on something else so you don't lock it up. I've learned that the hard way. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is change the center of this flower down here, number seven, double click. And then I'm going to do the programmable fill stitch right in here. And I'm going to zoom in before I do anything else so we can see it. There we go. And now we're going to go back to the shapes menu. I'm going to change that color. And I'm going to try to keep my centers in this same area. I'm going to do a little darker orange this time. That did change. I don't know if I like that or not. Let's do something else. Let's do, I think this one needs a darker purple. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try that one and see what that looks like. There we go. I like that. So now I'm still going to add, change the, the fill texture, and I'm not going to use the previous one that I used. So let's do this. Let's click on this. I want something totally different from all the others we've used. Let's do this. Kind of reminds me of um, all those steel toolboxes for pickup trucks and stuff. That, diamond pattern. So, oh, that's cool. I like that. Let me get in a little bit closer so you can see that one. Yeah, it's kind of like a little checkerboard almost. That looks good. But as you can see, now that I've zoomed in, it really adds a lot of texture to your, your fill designs when you're creating your own embroidery designs. So let's zoom, let's fit it to our window so we can see the entire thing now. And I'm going to call that one done. So you can see, you can sit here and play and play and play and get what whatever it is. You, you can even bring in other embroidery designs and just not something you've used auto punch for, but you can bring in any embroidery design and change the texture of it. For, we're just going to change one thing and it will create an outline. Fit to page, next. Add mask outline. Click on that. Nope, that's not it. If you create lines, notice now everything is outlined. And but what that will do, it will black out the actual colors and it will just stitch out the outline. Okay. So hold on. And you can click on those individual color shapes to select them and then click on OK. But notice you're just going to get an outline if you do that. So I personally would not do that. But there is a way because right here is how you can add the outline. So what you're gonna to have to do is select each individual step over here. If you wanted the, an outline around these, and I'm gonna double click on number one first. And notice up here, outline, that's what your outline is. This top one here, it says not sewn line. So if you click on that and drop it down and put a, any of these stitches, maybe if you want, like the triple stitch, and we're gonna add an outline around it because I kind of like how outlines work, my look myself. So there's just a single stitch around it. 
maybe you want something a little more pronounced, you could do a zigzag or a stem stitch. You could even do candle wicking around it if you wanted to. There's a stem stitch. It gives a little bit of a feathery edge, which is kind of cool. And then you could also add can or you could add candle wicking around it if you wanted to. Any of these stitches, oops, come here. The motif stitch, you could actually add your own custom design motif stitch if you chose to. For instance, if I go, now that the sewing attributes are select, selected, I can click on the file folder and the stitches I created are at the very bottom. Maybe I want that one, test number eight. Click on okay, check it out. And I'm gonna zoom in. But it just gives like a fuzzy edge to it, which sometimes I like to do an effect like this on applique. Maybe I wouldn't do it in black because if you put it to a color closer, to what the actual stitch out color is, what can happen is it'll soften a hard edge. Something to play with. But in order to put an outline around all of these, let's put it back to black. And then I'm just gonna select the zigzag stitch. And now I could actually add and see over here it added step number two automatically to put that zigzag, that satin stitch all the way around. Next would be number three, and I'm going to go back to fit the screen so we can see this as we progress around. Double click on number three. There's the black boxes. And then we are going to go to the shapes tab. We're gonna select zigzag. And it remembered my previous color, so it automatically put the black around it. So I got just a couple more to do here. Number five. <clears throat> Zigzag. And then we're going to do number seven. zigzag. And then number nine. But as you can see there, it's done that. Now another thing to think about is this. What if you could also create an in the hoop quilting design like this? So check this out. So all I would do in that case, instead of putting these as zigzags, I'm gonna try to do it as a group and we'll see what happens. No, I have to do them each individually, but that's okay. What I'm going to do, <clears throat> I am going to change these different elements so that it's not a solid stitch out. <clears throat> I'm going to do no sew for the background of the flower. And I'm going to change that zigzag stitch to a running stitch. I'm going to do the same thing for the central motif here. Let's see here. Next one. And we'll change that to no sew. And to running stitch. I'm just gonna work right down the line. And running stitch. The number four is next. No so running stitch. And then last but not least, no so 
and running stitch. So there would be a design that you could then stitch out as a quilting design. However, that would be a fairly large open design. Maybe, personally, I think what I would do is this. I'm gonna change, I'm first going to highlight all of this. And I'm gonna group it. It's already grouped, that's good. I'm gonna change the size of it. So I have the nine and a half by nine and a half. So, and right now it's nine, basically nine by nine. So what I would want to do here, I'd want this whole thing to be basically a four and a half inch square. And I'm gonna show you why. So I'm gonna put in this box 4.5. Preview. Now, <clears throat> I'm click on OK. Now it's still highlighted. So now I'm going to go here to Arrange Copy. Now I'm going to do a four way mirror. So I'm going to attempt to do here. Let's see. I'm on you. Let's get to drag it so they're separated. Closer together. And what I've done, I've mirrored this into a design element that should fit in that nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. And I purposely overlapped a little bit of this. So if I didn't have them touching, it would even probably would have been better. But you get the idea that you get the concept I'm going with here. You can actually mirror some of these designs into one large hoop design use for quilting or embroidery or any other purpose that you want to. What you can also do is select it all. And then I'm going to <clears throat> ungroup it. And then I think I can just separate them a little bit if I want to. I missed that up already. Anyway, you get the idea. So just be cognitive if you're gonna do this. If you, this would bother me right here. I saw I would not like to have, I was just watching when I lined it up, these two points right here, they should have been separated just a little bit more or a different way you could have done that. I'm just gonna back out of it. When in doubt, hit the undo button. Almost there, there we go. Now I'm gonna group that one design together. Make sure that is grouped, it is grouped. And now a different way to do this would be this. I'm gonna move this into one of the quadrants. There we go. And then we'll come over here and duplicate it. And then I also want to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it. To, I'm going to flip it horizontally. There we go. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. it down, then I'm going to rotate this one. <clears throat> rotate it left, I think. Yep, right there. Oh, come on you. Oh. There we go.
And one more. Duplicate. And we're going to rotate that. And then move it. And as you can see, you can you can just keep playing with it and get it how you want it to look. But it's an easy way to make a solid in the hoop design. Okay. But you can do that with any drawing once you get it back into this screen. So actually, let's clear this out. Save changes now. And then we're going to go back to the image. We're going to go back to Auto Punch. And we're going to select a different one this time. <clears throat> Scissors. Click on Next. Bit to page. Next. <clears throat> and then we're going to finish it. Let it convert. And right now, just by clicking on those buttons, this is ready to stitch out if I was happy with the colors and the texture and all of that. So when, as soon as it comes back into the design and layout, the design, the layout and editing screen, if you're happy with it without doing anything else, it's immediately ready to stitch out. But this is where we could go back in over here on the left hand side of the screen to select different elements to change color, change the texture, all that fun stuff. If you wanted an outline of this, there's five elements to it. We double click it. And you have to just add your running stitch or triple stitch for that outline area. There it is. And we'll make the fill stitch a not sewn area. And then we're just going to do that to each one of these pieces here. I'm just going to add triple for this one for each time. And it's if you do it from the very beginning, it's really easy because you're not jumping around all over the place like I was doing when I started the last one, but it's okay. Not sewn on the fit, no fill stitches. Let me show you something else here in a minute when we get our outline down. Come on you. My little black boxes weren't right there, that's why. There we go. Um, not sewn. Triple. We'll click on number five. Triple. And no sew for the fill. Now we have all of, there's our scissor outline. Scissors are really popular in a lot of long arm quilting designs or in quilting designs you do in the hoop. However, that being said, maybe you just want some decorative fill inside of this instead of the actual solid embroidery fill designs, right? So here you can actually go back and do all of that. So what I have selected right now is this handlebar. You'll have to add it to each one of the separate elements. So let's go here, decorative fill, click on a little file folder under here under sewing attributes. I'm just gonna select pattern number 02 and click on okay. And now you see it's put that pattern right inside of that one handle right there. So you could add a different decorative fill for each area if you chose to. Let's do one over here. Decorative fill. Folder. At least something a little more contrasty. 
Let's see here. Let's see what O1 looks like. There we go. And then we have a couple more areas. So this part here would actually be connected to this handlebar. So I'd want to use, I would personally want to use the same pattern here for this little section right here, which is number five. Decorative fill. This, this one. Okay. There we go. I see those match now. This one and that one look like they're one piece and behind this larger piece here. We just have two more little areas here to go. Decorative fill. You know, I'm not going to put a decorative fill there. I'm actually going to put like a net fill stitch just to give it a little bit of different texture. In the same way with that little circle, add something other than a decorative fill. Let's see here. How about some cross stitching in there? There we go. I'm going to zoom in so we can get a good look at that. There's just many ways to use these, these fill patterns and things to get many different results. Now you could save this at this, even make just a cute embroidery file. Let's say maybe you're going to do a towel or a table runner or you're making a mat for your machine to sit on. Well, these can be super cool for that. Or maybe you're going to make a sewing apron. I did have a sewing apron during the move from Colorado. It got packed away and I still haven't found it three, three years later now. <laughs> Stuff happens. So just another way you can use auto punch to get to, get to this. Okay.